Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Paddle, ENT surgeon at the Melbourne ENT Group. In this video, I'm going to talk about a common ENT procedure, flexible nasendoscopy. I'll briefly describe the procedure, reasons why you might need it, how it's performed, how it feels, the risks, the benefits, and the alternatives. A lot of ENT is all about managing the internal spaces of your head and neck region, your ear, nose, and throat. Whilst ears and mouths can generally be looked at using bright lights and magnification, to view the narrow and dark spaces of your sinonasal cavity and upper aerodigestive tract, that is your throat, your voice box, your upper swallowing pathways, your ENT surgeon needs to use a flexible, controllable, high definition illuminated camera. This is called a nasendoscopy, also known as a flexible nasendoscopy, FNE, or nasopharyngoscopy. Either way, nasendoscopy is a very common part of an ENT consultation and usually takes little more than five minutes. Not all conditions you see your ENT for will require a nasendoscopy. But some common symptoms and conditions include uh, nasal conditions such as nasal obstruction, nasal discharge or bleeding, sinus disease, throat conditions such as snoring and sleep apnea, difficulty swallowing, voice change, difficulty breathing, a lump in the throat, pain or discomfort. In younger children, it may not be advised or tolerated um, because the difficulty involved and minor distress it causes may outweigh the benefits. But more often than not, it's a very useful additional diagnostic tool that helps the ENT evaluate your condition. Generally, you are seated in a chair, and sometimes the procedure is performed with you semi-reclined or lying down on your back. A local anaesthetic is used more often than not, and your ENT surgeon will usually spray your nose with a numbing anaesthetic spray to decrease the sensation of minor discomfort in the nose and throat. It is, however, possible to have the examination without a local anaesthetic. This spray has a slight bit of taste, but it may have a range of custom flavoured anaesthetics to minimise the unpleasant taste. As the numbing sets in, you'll feel like your throat is swollen or thick, and you'll find it a little bit hard to swallow. This is just a trick of sensation. Your throat is completely normal, but a numb throat finds it hard to initiate a swallow. This will last for 20 to 30 minutes, and we advise you not to consume any hot food or drink until your sensation has returned to normal, just so that you don't burn yourself or that food doesn't go down the wrong way. The scope is a 2 to 5 mm diameter flexible, controllable tube with a built-in camera and illumination. It may be connected to a screen or monitor so that you can see what your surgeon sees. Photos and or video recordings may also be taken. The surgeon will gently pass the scope into one or both of your nostrils to look at the nasal cavity and sinus openings on both sides. Your surgeon will generally then choose a nostril to continue the evaluation, travelling down the back of your nose, past your palate and into your throat from where the larynx voice box, and opening of the esophagus can be seen. Your surgeon will look for masses and sores and any asymmetries and the general health of the lining tissues. Your surgeon will also look at the normal movements of all the structures in your upper aerodigestive tract, such as the palate, the vocal cords, and the muscles of swallowing. Things your surgeon may ask you to do during the nasendoscopy include breathing quietly or breathing vigorously, coughing or clearing your throat, making certain sounds such as prolonged vowel sounds, such as e's or oo's, counting from one to 10, and making a few short, sharp sniffs. Your surgeon may ask you to swallow, or even try to breathe inwards with a closed mouth and nostrils to simulate snoring or sleep apnea positions. A stroboscopy, which is a, a specialized form of imaging used to evaluate the vibration properties of the vocal folds or vocal cords, may also be done during your nasendoscopy using the same scope. Your meg surgeon will explain in further detail if or when this is required. Transnasal tracheoscopy is also something that may occasionally be performed by your surgeon. Additional local anaesthetics is sometimes used if your meg surgeon wants to pass the nasal endoscope beyond the vocal cords to directly evaluate the trachea, the windpipe, and the proximal bronchi, the entrances into your lungs. Your meg surgeon will explain in further detail if or when this is required. You'll experience mild discomfort during placement of the scope. There'll also be a mild foreign body sensation and perhaps an urge to swallow or cough. Sometimes patients may have a strong gag or coughing reflex. The risk is generally minimal. There's a small chance of bloodstained mucus or a blood nose. There's a small chance of feeling faint or even fainting. Flexible endoscopes are sterilized and decontaminated according to protocols, and these are followed to minimize the chance of transmitting viruses and bacteria from one patient to the next. The chance is very small. Nasendoscopy gives your ENT surgeon unsurpassed direct vision of the internal spaces of your nose, sinuses, larynx or voice, and pharynx. It also gives your ENT surgeon a view of how things move, for example your vocal cords when there is a concern about your voice or breathing, or your tongue, tonsils and palates when there is a concern about snoring, obstructive sleep apnea, or swallowing. Imaging, such as lateral neck x-rays, 
CAT scans or CTs or MRIs can be used in certain cases instead of nasendoscopy. For example, in children, when there's a question about adenoid tissue enlargement. The benefits of using imaging or nasendoscopy versus the small risks associated with radiation in these cases do need to be considered. An indirect mirror exam is a simple and long used technique of using a small mirror placed through the mouth and peering down at the voice box like a reverse periscope. This can be used to visualize the voice box and surrounding areas of your throat. This exam is limited, however, in what it can see, as it can't see all the deep and dark recesses of your throat, but it is useful where nasendoscopy is not possible and a view of the surfaces and movement of the voice box are important. Thanks for watching this video. Check out our YouTube channel and watch further videos and information um, on ENT conditions uh, and procedures. And of course, uh, also head over to our website where you can download information sheets.